In June 2013, a multi-beam survey was carried out near Brest in France. In this clip, we will try to demonstrate how backscatter and water column data can support bathymetry processing. This survey area was selected because it contains a number of lobster pots. These pots are relatively small objects. They are constructed as an open frame with metal wires. The size varies between 1 and 2 metres and the height between 50 centimetres and 1 metre. The data from the Konsberg 2040C multi-beam echo sounder was collected with Quincy and processed with the Quincy Processing Manager, Fledermouse FMGT using the Geocoder Toolbox and Fledermouse Midwater for the water column data processing. We use Fledermouse to visualise all of the data in four dimensions. The raw data is replayed using the recorded Quincy database files from the acquisition phase. This part of the clips demonstrate how Quincy can fill the multi-resolution grid with bathymetry data. These displays are set up in Quincy to demonstrate how the different data sources can be visualised. On the left, the plan view with the grid statistics. On the top right, the water column data. And in the bottom right, we can see the motion and refraction corrected bathymetry data. In the Processing Manager we can see the surveyed area in both the 2D and 3D view. You can clearly see the lobster pots. Let's now generate a backscatter mosaic in Fledermouse Geocoder. FMGT can read the native Quincy data formats in QPD and database from the Quincy project. For building a mosaic we need both the database for the beam scatter observations and the QBD for the clean multi-beam footprints. Here is the mosaic. As you can see, the mosaic contains some interesting objects. Now simply export the mosaic to a geo-referenced TIFF image. We will now start the Quincy Processing Manager and import the mosaic that we just generated in Fledermouse Geocoder. As can be seen from the bathymetry grid, the mosaic and the 3D view are some objects visible in the backscatter that are not clearly shown in the bathymetry data. Let's try to find some evidence in the data derived from the water column. OK, let's now have a look at the data from the water column. Fledermouse Midwater also reads the data from the native Quincy DV and QPD files. The data is now loaded, so let's have a look at some of the water column data using the fan beam view. Here is the result. Only two observations from the object itself. Let's select the beams around the object and build a stack from that. Adjusting the histogram to remove the noise of the water column. 
and digitize the object. These points can be exported to a Fledermaus SD object. In Fledermaus we can combine the selected points with the bathymetry grid. We can now easily generate an animation of the water column over the actual survey line. Here is the object. And now load the points that we have just selected in the water column with FM Midwater. Let's do the animation once more. And again. We hope this clip demonstrated that additional backscatter and water column data supports the processing and validation of the bathymetry data. Thank you.